Sherry. Hi, everyone. My name is Kyra Minnigan, and I'm going to be your speaker for today. This webinar was birthed from a lot of conversations. Some of you may be on this webinar, um, and you all have all asked me how to use CogMed into your practice. So my goal today is to share with you what I've learned over the past 10 years using CogMed, especially with individuals with ADHD in my private practice. So let me give you a little backstory about me so that you'll understand kind of um, where, where I came from, how I got to this point, and why I know um, the power of CogMed. So um, I've been a certified speech pathologist for 30 years, and I've spent most of that time working with the brain. My journey started right after graduate school when I went to a specialty rehabilitation clinic um, and then moved on to a level one trauma hospital. Those experiences that I gained in those two places created a foundation for me that taught me the power of cognitive intervention and specifically neuroplasticity of the brain. Another fun fact about me is that in addition to my speech pathology degree, I have a master's in specific learning disabilities. This combination gave me a different perspective on learning differences and allowed me to create a private practice to help smart kids get smarter through cognitive skill training and coaching. The information that I'm gonna share with you today come, came from the work that I did um, and the lives that I've changed in my private practice. So with that, let's begin. Next slide. Years ago, I saw a problem and I decided that I wanted to offer or at least find a, a solution. A friend of mine reached out to me whose child was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. She had a diagnosis and a label, but not a plan. Um, I quickly realized that this was very common. Um, it turns out that a lot of parents, after they would get a diagnosis, um, they were looking for what to do next. So I kind of sat, sat out on a journey to just try to help them solve this problem. And what I ended up doing was um, creating a system that looked at a person's cognitive skills um, their profile, I identified their weaknesses, and then I would provide cognitive skill training to create a balance, reduce the tension, and stop the struggle. It turns out that that system worked. I got results, and there were specific tools that I used within my practice. One of those products was CogMed. So I do think it's real important um, to share with you why CogMed became such a key player in my practice. Prior to finding CogMed, I used a lot of other cognitive programs and targeted a variety of weak cognitive skills. I did see gains using these programs, but I could never really get the gains that I was looking for in a particular area known as working memory. The more research and the more study that I did, the more I believed that I found, uh, or more that I the more I did research and the more I studied, the more I found um, and felt certain that working memory was a key player. So I just set out looking for the product that would help me um, raise that weakness in individuals, specifically what I was seeing with in the lives of individuals with ADHD and dyslexia. So what is CogMed? Next slide. Um, I'm going to give you a short summary of the program, but I really had to stop and think about what it was I wanted to share with you today and how I wanted to kind of get the point across. Um, you can go to a product page, just like I did when I was researching, and you can read all of the things on that product page, but it's really the, the people that make the difference. Um, I know with me, when I was working with uh, or talking with parents, they weren't as concerned about the product as much as they were concerned as what it would do. So I thought I would take you through um, and just help you kind of view it from a perspective of the clients or the individuals that I work with. But I do want to share with you, um, I want to make this very specific and know that CogMed is an evidence-based digital training program, and it was developed by leading cognitive neuroscientists at the Karolinski Institute in Sweden. 
It is specifically designed to target working memory and attention. And these two skills we know are typically weak in individuals with ADHD. So before I purchase anything, I have to believe in a product. I have to believe that it comes from sound research. And it just so happened when I was looking for the um, something to help, Cogmed and Pearson put on a conference. Um, this was years and years ago. And it was in Arizona and I decided to go. And at that conference, I got to not only learn about the product, but I heard from leading neuroscientists and leading ADHD experts in the field. And honestly, I can tell you that when I left that conference, I knew that I was going to use CogMed. And I knew, um, actually looking back, it was a huge pivotal moment that made a huge difference in my practice. So um, if you want to see the research specifically, please visit cogmed.com. You'll, you'll find everything that you need to know and more there. there. I think there's like 129 research articles on there. Um, and then I've also provided in the chat a link for a demo that you can go on and see the specific like um, child doing something. Um, actually, the boy that you're looking at right now, that's a prime example. Sometimes I would let them use um, an iPad pen, but sometimes it was just their finger. So a client actually used what the like the picture that you're seeing on um, the screen right now. But again, let me go back and just say that I want to just take you through a journey and let you see it from, view it from like a day to day. What's it look like using CogMed in your practice? So um, I'm going to start with a guy that I'm going to call Jamar. Jamar's mom called me three times before the first day of the first session. Um, she didn't think that she was going to be able to get him there because he kept yelling at her and telling her that he hates tutoring. This is very common for kids like Jamar who didn't understand what CogMed was or is, but actually, and, and only had been to tutoring to help. So um, you also, if you're familiar with um, the ADHD middle school population, if they don't want to do something or they're resistant, they oftentimes will take it out on the people that they love the most, which happens to oftentimes be the moms. So um, Jamar's mom was very upset. She just wanted to know how she could get him there, what she was supposed to say to her son. Um, and I found out that she, she's was not the first person. She wasn't the last person who asked me that. And I told her the same thing that I'm going to tell you um, in case this happens with you and your clients. Um, the important part about uh, building trust and getting a student to actually complete CogMed or do CogMed is um, truly just letting them come beside you on the first session. So I always had, the I did the first session with them in person. Um, and for Jamar, I did lots of sessions with him. But this was back in the day when I saw um, kids one-on-one -on -one in my practice four to five days a week for an hour. Um, so what happened with Jamar was he showed up the first day. I told the mom, just validate his feelings, um, say as little as possible, and um, just get him there. So she did. She brought him to me. And what he was expecting to walk into was a notebook paper, something that looked like school. And what he actually saw was a simple table, two chairs, an iPad, and I used an iPad iPad stand. Um, just That's just how I used it. I think it works best if there's actual, it's upright. Um, and he sat down and um, he just kind of looked at me like, what are we doing? <laughs> and so I explained to him, this was a digital program um, called CogMed that we were going to work with together. I was going to walk beside him. I was going to, he, every day he was going to come here. He was going to put in his, uh, he was going to log into an app because CogMed is an app. He put in a password and that's a password is what you would give your clients 
every day. They have their own password. They're working on their own individual um, platform. And um, I would be there to guide him along and hold him accountable for doing these exercises. I also explained to him that we would be doing this for 25 days, um, not specific. Like when, with him, we were going to do it four to five days a week. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit later because there's other options. But for Jamar's case, we, we did. I worked with him one-on-one, -on -one, four to five days a week. Um, and I told him at the end of this, we would he would get a gift card and that's important too to have that reward so um i also set up some other expectations that i'm going to go through a little bit later but this just kind of gives you an example of what a day-to-day -day, um experience would be for the client um i also explained to him and i think this is really important I spoke with him and explained to him that this program helps working memory and things that felt hard to him in school or felt like it caused extra energy or it took him longer to do. This was going to help um, improve those skills and it would not happen immediately, but it would happen over time. So he had to trust me with that. And we were going to work through this together over 25 sessions. The next day when he when his mom dropped him off, she said, I didn't even have to argue with him. He actually wanted to come back. So that is a lot. And then something really, um, I guess, impressive for me with Jamar that I'll never forget was about midway through our time together, um, his mom had called me. He didn't show up for his appointment, which was rare because he always showed up. And she called me and she said she got stuck in traffic and she had to pass my office to go from, uh, to pick him up every day to then bring him back to my office to, to hang out with me or work with me. And on that specific day when she was late, he saw that she didn't show up in time and she, he couldn't reach her. And so he started walking to the office. So she pulled over, saw him walking, picked him up and brought him to me. So this is a middle school boy who is diagnosed with ADHD and he didn't want to miss a session. So he actually walked to the, started walking on his own to see me. That's powerful if you think about it on a lot of different levels. So when people ask me, do will my kid do it? Will he like it? Will he hate it? Whatever. I always think back to Jamar and he honestly was not any different than any of the other kids. Um, yes, it took a little bit of resistance up front, but if you could get them there and you build trust with them and they could feel and see that this was working and this was different, it makes a difference as well. So um, I think that's pretty powerful um, and it's something just to remember and it's a true story. All right, so um, on a side note, I wanna say that um, CogMed collects the individual da uh, individual data, um, and you can see that with in Jamar. So I was able to track his data. I'm able to see when it's hard, when it's not hard, and um, actually just if I needed to give more rewards or more encouragement on a on a specific day, I can. But you're seeing it in real life. You're actually seeing the client change right before your I feel like right before your very eyes, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, next slide. So why CogMed? Um, I think working memory, well, actually, I know, I don't even think anymore. I know that working memory is a secret sauce to help kids who are struggling, especially academically. Um, the research will tell you that, but I can tell you that the research aligned with everything I saw in my 10 years of private practice. Um, I had read a lot of Dr. Tracy Alloway's um, research and along with tons of other working memory research and scientists, neuroscientists, and um, they all say that working memory is the best predictor of academic success and intelligence. Um, and I 100% agree with that. 
And when research aligns with clinical observation, transformation happens. And CogMed was the one that um, proved this to be true for me time and time again. So I was able to see um, just the benefits every day. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but 30% of children diagnosed with dyslexia are also diagnosed with ADHD. The rate um, of poor working memory in students with dyslexia and other learning disabilities range from 20 to 50% compared to 10% of students overall. With that being said, it made more sense to me to start improving attention and working memory before I ever worked on anything else um, with dyslexia. And this was way back, um, I started doing this way before people even started talking about dyslexia with working memory. Um, and I was seeing results, but it was, it's pretty cool now to think that now the research supports that and um, it totally makes a difference in that population. So sometimes if you have a child with ADHD, um, they may or may not be um, diagnosed with dyslexia, but it is something that's of importance to consider and remember. And CogMed can be a huge um, or a powerful tool to use with that population. Um, when I started applying cognitive intervention in tandem with the other best practices for dyslexia, the time that a person with dyslexia took to catch up with their peers was reduced significantly. All right, so let me interrupt my storytelling to talk a bit about my four-step process with CogMed, just so that you all can follow along and um, know that it's pretty simple and seamless to uh, apply in your, in your practice. The first thing that I did was um, I... So the first uh, appointment I saw was the evaluation. So a person would come to me, um, either they would have a psychological education evaluation already completed and updated, um, or they wouldn't. But regardless, I did an evaluation. So I used that along with any other history, medical history, um, school history. And then I did, I did my own evaluation for the very on the very first um, time that I saw a client. From that evaluation, I determined what my plan was going to be. And that plan will um, vary. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of that plan in a, in a second. But um, from the evaluation, you can learn a lot, and that's going to determine um, the specifics of the plan. Once you get the plan in place, you can start intervention. And once intervention is completed, then you can do a wrap-up session. Um, so to be more specific on um, the plan, I want to go to the next slide. So the first thing is to determine if a client is appropriate. Um, and you're going to know this from the evaluation. Um, I never, ever signed anyone up to do CogMed if I did not think that they could be successful. Um, that was So I picked quality over quantity every time. Some people might need work on working memory, but they were not, or they may just, they may just need something else prior to um, being prepared to do this type of a program. Um, for example, if your business is completely online and you're planning on seeing them one time a week, um, if they are young, like because CogMed can work with ages four on through adults, that may not work for you. Um, but I have worked with clients as young as four and as um, old as 67. And um, it would vary according to how I would see them. So what I mean by that is some people could do it online. Some people were not being able to do it online. But when I first started my practice, online was not even an option. So um, the plan would include how I was going to see them and also um, 
how long I was going to see them. So CogMed can be done 25 sessions. And if you think of sessions, you can think of days, at least that's how I thought about it, because you complete um, modules within that session and it would be determined the next day based on the individuals um, that went through it. So for example, you have your client, they go through all these different exercises. It says you completed your training day and then the next day would start where that one left off. You can also do it 30 sessions and 40 sessions. Um, I've done it all because again, I've been working with this, this product for 10 years. But my sweet spot of success was with the 25 sessions. So, um, but it does have a variety and you'll be able to see that once you log into your um, coaching platform. Um, once I got the plan in place, I did ask that they, um, everybody commit to the, that specific terms. So if they were going to do 25 sessions, intensity, duration, and frequency is what changes the brain. So if I had someone who did not think that they could complete that many sessions um, in a within a time period that I felt that they needed to, meaning um, my, again, my sweet spot was three to four times a week that they would have to complete their sessions. Um, if they were not able to do that for various reasons, mainly their schedule, then I would um, not sign them up. I would just put them on a waiting list for a time that they could, for example, like in the summer. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I also created a spreadsheet that had the client's name, their password, um, their start and end date, that I could track their progress. And that's just, for me, um, that was easy to do and it would help me keep track of everybody. Um, in Within CogMed Learning System, once you become a coach, they do um, offer marketing materials, they offer calendars, certificate, uh, certificates of completion. So there's a lot of things within that uh, CogMed training and learning system that's uh, in, it's kind of like the back, back system once you, once you um, purchase CogMed. Um, and then I also created, and again, this was, CogMed's kind of evolved over time. So back when I originally started, they didn't have all the materials that they have now. And so I had created my own. Some parents really want to feel like they are able to help in some way. And so I created a document that allowed them to just track their uh, child's progress and also offered kind of some healthy habits for parenting the child with ADHD. For example, I would put in positive affirmations. I might put in a specific um, something that it, they could do for the the day, like put a sticky note on their child's mirror that said, um, you're awesome or something just different. Um, you can kind of play around with that however you want, but CogMed is the actual program of intervention. But I do think that coaching element is important. So um, it doesn't tell you how to you run your practice like that, but that's just a variety or something special that you can, you can definitely offer them. Um, and definitely think that here are some things that you need to, um, consider during that planning phase. And when you're talking to them, you want to make sure that there's a reward, um, added to the plan. So for example, I offered gift cards for my students, but I really talked with the family and encouraged them to offer something as a reward too, because CogMed isn't easy. Um, when I say isn't easy, it just means that it changes the brain. So it's pushing the brain beyond what it feels comfortable doing without actually being uncomfortable. But it is a big deal. And it is a big deal for a person with ADHD to complete anything. <laughs> That's a big deal. Um, so I want to just set that in place. And, and I'm 
I'll often talk to the parents about, and even if it's a, if you, even if it was an adult, I would say, is there something that you've been wanting to buy for yourself that you haven't? Then create, you know, say that this is what you're going to do. When you finish this, this is what you're going to get. So for the adults, I would say, listen, you know, if you've been wanting to take a trip, um, print out that visual that lets you see that trip, put it on, you know, place it in front of your computer that you're doing CogMed with so that you can kind of just, the brain loves a reward and especially the ADHD brain. So that's really important. Um, and for parents, I often would say, is there something big that you know that you're going to buy your child that they don't know that you're going to buy it? Um, when I had my son go through it eons ago, I knew I was going to be buying him an iPhone or, you know, a phone, and he desperately wanted that, um, but he didn't know I was going to get it for him. So that's kind of how I started out going, okay, you know what, if you finish this, then this is what we're going to get at the end of that. So rewards are a big, a big deal. Um, you also want to make sure that um, they know that the importance of that consistency. So I know I said it before about intensity, duration, and frequency, but I use this example to kind of just drive that home with the parents or the individuals. If you go to the gym one day a week, that's awesome. You're going to the gym, but it's not going to change your body one day a week. And using CogMed one day a week is not going to change your brain. You actually have to use it um, consistently with intensity, duration, and frequency. That's what the neuroscience and neuroplasticity will tell you. And that's what Cog how CogMed was designed. And that's how you need to come up and approach it. So when a parent or an individual is investing money, they want to get the best out of their investment. So I always just try to put it in terms that they can understand. And the gym is kind of one of those because um, I always say, listen, I am not, I mean, the gym is hard for me. I don't love going to the gym, but I know that I need to go to the gym. And if I want to see improvement, I'm going to have to go more than one time a week. And the beautiful part about this is another really good, important fact that I love about CogMed is it is a short time period. So in 25 sessions, you can actually see change. And there's not a lot of things out there that I can say that will have that quick of an effect. So um, that's awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about um, the next slide, for, please. We are gonna go with the options for coaching. And so, like I said before, when I started out, we had one option and that was in person. Um, and again, I've been doing this for 10 years. So think back 10 years. Um, and there's a variety of options now in place. So you can see the person one-on-one -on -one in person, and you're the facilitator. You can see the person online. I used a Zoom platform, or you can see the person in groups. And I used, um, also used, um, you can see groups in person or online, and I've done both. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that's really cool now, um, because I got success pretty early, I started seeing or having a, a referral base, word of mouth kind of spread quickly. And there were people who were out of my driving distance. So I had um, a large clientele that would drive 45 minutes one way, would have to spend an hour with me and then drive 45 minutes back. I knew that that was not feasible for long periods of time because they're kids and I wanted them to have a life. Um, so I started diving into trying to perfect online before um, actually online intervention was even a thing. Um, and thank goodness I did. So I actually would explain to people how to use Zoom before Zoom became a household name. If I had not done that, and just looking back, this is just kind of an FYI, when you're looking for ways to um, kind of in your private practice, I always listen to what my customers needed. 
and clients needed and then try to solve the problem. And when I did that, it benefited everybody. For example, I solved the problem and perfected using Cogment online. I knew I got the same results. I was confident with my results. I was confident how I used it. And then the pandemic hit. And this was, I mean, I'd already been perfecting this and using it, but had I not done that, I would have been scrambling like so many people were um, when the pandemic hit. For me, I didn't skip a beat. My practice didn't skip a beat. I was actually busy during the pandemic because I, I was confident how to market this. I was confident how to use it. I was confident with the results. And I knew kids had more time to um, enhance their skills during that downtime. So um, that was a beautiful thing. As far as groups, um, I was very surprised that once I did groups um, in person, that was that was good. But what really became powerful was when I used them online. So I would use um, I would see kids or individuals in a group based on their. I tried to base it on their age. Um, and what happened was I got really good results. I actually got better results. Um, and I think it's due to a couple of things. Number one, I think that the kids really liked seeing that they weren't alone. Um, if you've worked with individuals with ADHD, they don't, if they're going to be doing something hard, they want to do it. They want everybody to be doing hard. And so creating this environment and setting up a situation where they all could be doing this at one time and seeing each other, that was powerful. Um, they were able to do that and, and they love the commu community. Um, they would actually send me a chat. If one of them was missing that day, they would be like, Hey, where's Johnny, you know, which was, none of their business where Johnny was, but, you know, I thought it was really cute that they would, they really felt connected to their people. Now in a group, they're able to see the other people, but they're not able to see them working on their own. Like they would be still logging in using the same, um, using their own password. So they weren't using the same, um, they were all on different levels is what I'm trying to say. And that was a, that was pretty powerful. Um, when it was finished, when groups were finished, I often had parents reach back out to me and say, Hey, do you have any other groups? My kid's wanting to get back into a group. He wants to do more. And that again, speaks power for here's something, here's a product that the kids don't mind doing and it actually benefits them. So that's amazing. Um, and um, I think sometimes the other thing with the groups, when you come, when it comes to coaching, especially like for the social emotional aspect with specific clients, you can really um, use some different stuff. I, I gave this example one time when I was speaking to a professional, I had um, an older person who wasn't able to join in on their group. And so to do a makeup session, I asked them, I said, Hey, would you like to come in to another group? There are a lot of younger people, but, um, you know, you could be actually like a role model or a mentor. And that little experiment turned into a beautiful thing, um, because all the young people were just thrilled that an older person was in this, um, group with them and it allowed the group or the, the older person who didn't have really a lot of confidence and was never asked to be a leader, kind of take on that role as a leader. So you can kind of play around with those um, types of things when you're doing groups. And um, I love that. So um, what started out with just a family of four siblings um, who were all diagnosed with ADHD, it turned in the groups were a powerful tool um, to improve scores. And um, I got great results. Um, so another thing, I've got some tips and tricks as far as helping, <clears throat> excuse me, helping the sessions run smoothly. I think it's really important that expectations and communications are effectively um, given. So for example, um, you just have to set it up from the get-go. 
There's no bathroom breaks uh, unless an emergency. There's no food. You want to make sure you offer rewards. Um, I also offer a contract. And I think it's important to actually have everybody sign that contract. So if it's a kid, I have the parent, the child, and myself sign that contract. And the contract is simple, just says basically, um, you know, the amount of sessions that are required, what's expected, and um, the completion date. And what that really, what I try to kind of um, emphasize in that specific instance was that uh, we're all in this together and the child could actually see the power that there's two adults who are rooting for them. So it creates this kind of a team effort that I think was, and at least I saw was very powerful. Um, as far as environment, they're expected to show up on time, um, a quiet space, free of clutter, free of noise, and then I had a calendar where they could check off so that they knew that um, they were making progress. I had like um, a calendar with 25 like circles, all one through 25. They would just X that out and they could see themselves moving through that process, which um, again was really good. Um, I did not, under any circumstances, allow them, if they were doing it online, to be lying down, lounging around on the carpet. Um, I took this and I, I set up the expectation that this was a professional working environment and they were to um, show up like that. So it wasn't just something that we just laid around and did. You couldn't do it in your bed. You know, it, you had to be at a table sitting upright. And like you were, if you were online, you were just like you were sitting there with me one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, next slide. Um, so basically, as far as CogMed's part, I want you to think of the whole system as a tandem bike ride. So CogMed does its own part. Um, it's absolutely 100% sound. <laughs> And it can push the client further than you even think you, you can, it can be pushed. Um, and then you are actually the facilitator and the coach. So you're there to encourage, to um, when it gets hard, to validate that it's hard, but they can do hard things. And then accountability coach and partner till the end. Um, CogMed does provide the buttons and the science, but it's up to the client and it's up definitely up to the professional to use it appropriately to gain the most of it. Now, the wrap-up session, um, that's my favorite part. It's a simple report. Um, I used it to determine if any other services were needed and allowed. it also allowed me to provide resources. And then I always ask them to keep in touch via email. Other thing that I did was I, um, when I provided the report, CogMed has a data report, so you can actually download that at the end of the, the last session. It'll calculate everything and you'll have it all in a, in a report. I um, used that, but I copy and pasted some of the, the um, graphs and put it into just a simple report for the parents that they can understand. I never released that until the very end of the wrap-up session, and here's why. Because I love the wrap-up session. I started each one of them just by asking the same question. So what did you notice? What have you seen change over the course of 25, the, the time that we worked together? And more often than not, they would sit there and they would say, well, I don't know if this had anything to do with what you did, but here is what we have seen. They would say things like they do their homework independently. They are so confident. Uh, they follow and listen to my directions. I actually saw him pick up a book for the first time, um, things like that. And so then I'm able to take that report and connect the dots between what they saw behavior wise and what we know from neuroscience that working memory affects X, Y, Z. So um, I just think I thought the wrap up session was really cool and I loved it. Um, and it's just a way that you kind of just see the fruits of your labor 
the fruits of the client's labor and you kind of just put it all in a nice little bow. Um, all right, so what is the cost? Um, that's what everybody, oh, sorry, before I do that, the, I skipped a part. <laughs> Actually, on the wrap-up session, one of the things that uh, I learned to be true is that I had 100% completion rate, I saw 100% benefits, and 0% asked for a refund. And now this is over a course of 10 years. Also, the completion rate was specific to the fact that I did not have or um, sign up people who were not appropriate for CogMed. Um, I, I don't know that that would have been the case if I had just taken on and signed up everybody that came in wanting CogMed. I really took um, a specific approach when doing this because I wanted my clients to succeed and then also wanted to provide quality services so that when um, later on, when I was looking for referrals, people would say, yes, it actually worked. Um, so I did see the completion rates. I saw the benefits. And again, nobody asked for a refund. All right, so now on to the cost. Speaking of refunds, <laughs> um, professionals that I speak with all the time, that's one of the main things they want to know is how much does it cost? What can I charge? Um, yada, yada, yada. I will tell you that neither Pearson nor CogMed is going to tell you how much to charge your clients. That's just not their business to do. Um, and But it is, as far as a private practitioner, it's important. So I will tell you what I did. Um, I did it 10 years ago, and I think I would do it today if I was starting now, is I started to Google. I Googled other people, other businesses that used it. Um, I got a baseline for what the you know, least amount was, what the most expensive amount was. And I based it upon where I was, what my um, socioeconomic situation was in the community that I was providing the service in. Um, I've seen it be as low as $1,300 and I've seen it go as high as $5,000. Um, one of the things that I did was I charged a specific fee for the evaluation because there was no you know, I didn't know if they were going to sign up or agree to the plan or not. So that allowed me one cost. Um, then if they did agree to it, I included in that plan the wrap up session. So I added my um, individual cost, um, like hourly rate and how much I was going to see them. And then also um, paired it with how many times I was going to see them um, and included the wrap up session and the report. Um, one of the things I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but um, I know I spoke one on one that I saw the clients three or four times a week, but actually that's one way of seeing them, but I also saw them one time a week, um, but then required them to do CogMed on their own. So I would coach them one day a week and I always did the first session with them. And then they were responsible three or four days a week to complete those sessions on their own. That's That goes back to kind of tracking that progress where you could um, see what if they're doing it. If they're not doing it, you can intervene. You can send them a text. Um, if you see that their data is not going well, um, you can. So I charge differently if I was seeing them one time a week versus if I was seeing them three or four days a week. That's just me. That's just how I did it. But again, um, you can, you kind of just base it on your frame of reference where you are. Um, the other piece to that is insurance. I was a private pay practitioner, so I did not take insurance. I am not an insurance guru. I didn't code. I didn't bill like that. So if you're wanting to know about insurance and, and if insurance will cover it, you're not going to find that information from CogMed and you're not going to find that information from Pearson. You're going to have to um, just talk to other providers uh, and see if what they do or how they do it. Uh, because we don't have the answer for that. Um, most of the time, CogMed is sold in a package. So let's say 25 sessions of CogMed, you would get a license and a password, and it would be X amount of dollars. I had my clients pay half at the beginning, and then um, 
half about midway through. And sometimes midway through, I would um, give them like a progress report, but I would always, payment had to be paid in full prior to the wrap-up session. I would hold the report or hold the wrap-up session if they if I didn't have payment. But the majority of the time, that was never the case because usually they're already seeing progress and their client still wants to finish it. So um, with my 100% completion rate, it just was not a problem to, to do that. Um, I've also heard professionals tell me, well, I don't think my clients will pay for it. I think it, it might cost too much. They won't be able to do it. Don't assume that your patient's not going to pay for something um, because that's your opinion. What I would say to you is I was confident what this product would do. I knew the lives that it had changed. I knew the power behind this. And if they could pay for it, great. I offered it to them. That doesn't mean that they had to all take it and not all of them did, but don't restrict offering something that you know will serve them well, just based on your assumption that they won't pay for it. Uh, because in my opinion, I've seen, you know, I've had people drive up to my office in Ferraris who didn't want to pay for it. And I've had single moms who called uncle or grandpa or somebody and found a way to pay for it. So it just, you can't just really put that assumption on your client. Um, think of it as a service that you're providing. Um, okay, so return on investment. Um, this is pretty good because if, like I told you, the cheapest was $1,300 that I was finding, it's $1,000 for unlimited license for a year. So you get your return on investment from day one. Um, another option is if you don't feel like you can invest $1,000 for unlimited um, licensures for a year, Cognet does have the option to pay, you can pay $350 for one license and take someone through that and just get a feel for the product and how um, it can change, and then you can see if you want to buy more. So those are two options for um, return on investment. Next slide. Um, the referrals, you can also go to, um, you can, once you become a CogMed coach, you can ask to be um, on the list of providers, and CogMed has that, and you just sign up for it. I will tell you that it lists your contact information. I definitely got referrals um, from CogMed. And I also, because my patients would report back to their physicians or doctors, I would get referrals a lot from that, from therapists, from schools. Anytime that you're making a difference in someone's life and they think that you have a solution, you're going to get referrals. So if you do your job and you run CogMed the way that it's supposed to be run, then you will get referrals. That will not be a problem. You will be extremely busy. Um, all right, let me talk. I'm running out of time and I want to make sure I get to everybody uh, or everything and have, leave time for some questions. I do want to share with you on as far as um, another powerful story. This is Kenzie. Um, that's not her name. I changed it. But I, I started seeing Kenzie in fifth grade. Um, her reading tutor recommended that she come see me. She'd been tutored since second grade, um, and she was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. She'd been, the tutor had been doing everything she knew to do as far as um, dyslexia uh, protocol, and she wasn't seeing any movement. So um, I took a look at her psychological educational evaluation and saw that she had um, decreased working memory and offered CogMed. We went through CogMed and then she went back to her um, reading tutor and her reading tutor was absolutely amazed and she just started making progress quickly. Um, the thing about Kenzie is her mom continues to update me and I just got a letter from her um, last month and I thought this is pretty powerful. So she said, um, Tyra, I thought you'd like to know that you helped a child who was losing confidence in herself, thinking negative thoughts about herself, and in the bottom 10% of readers at her, 
in her school on, in fifth grade. Kenzie is now an honor student who is excelling in all classes, including AP level classes. She has the confidence to compete in state and national competition clubs and organization, and she re represents the youth of Tennessee as a Tennessee Strong Ambassador. The skills and tools that she learned from you continue to be a gift, and we are forever grateful. Thank you. So do the results last? Next slide. Um, the research says it does, and I can tell you that it does because over 10 years, I still get emotional in May. Um, see, I get teary out. <sighs> Every um, May, I get um, graduation cards, <laughs> and they all are telling me the difference that I made in their students. Um, I can tell you that CogMed, without a shadow of a doubt, sorry, I, I get emotional. <laughs> Um, it helped my practice. It helped my students. It is a powerful, powerful tool. And I want as many professionals out there to know about it that can and use it um, to make a difference. Kids need you. <laughs> and I need you to learn about this and use it to help change the lives of so many. Um, all right. So where do you go from here? If during this presentation, someone came to your mind that you think can benefit from CogMed, ask yourself if it'll work in your practice. And if it will, go to pearsonassessments.com, type in CogMed and click on the order now button. Follow the steps. Um, if you need more time to think about it, you have more questions in the chat box is a form that you can fill out and we can schedule a time and you can talk with me and I can answer any questions that you have. Um, if you think that there's someone else that, you know, this might not work for your practice, but you think it might work for somebody else, then please share this message or this um, webinar um, with them. Um, all right, the last slide. So one of the things that I kept seeing and hearing people say to me um, when they left my session or when they left, left my initial evaluation was um, I walk in feeling hopeless and I walk out feeling hopeful. And that's because I offered them a plan and a solution to stop the struggle. And so many people are in need of that today that I, um, I'm just asking you to take a look at this product and see the value. And hopefully you can be blessed as blessed as I did to have an impact on so many, so many lives. Thank you for the presentation and I'm gonna, turn it over and see what kind of questions that we have. Hey there, Kyra. So we do have a few questions. Um, how long do the effects last? And do you often have clients who come back wanting or needing to do CogMed again, or was it mostly a one and done? Mostly one and done, um, and that's along with research. However, um, the only time that I saw clients over or for a second time was if they had suffered concussion. So I can think of a couple kids that I saw again, um, and that was due to um, they were, I saw a lot of athletes, they would have a concussion, um, their working memory was definitely impacted, and I would bring them back in for a session. But um, that's not the norm. Most of the time, after um, another thing I forgot to say is that when you finish those like let's say the last session, um, 25, 30, 40, whatever it is you, you are working with, then the working memory will grow for about two months. Um, and I read that and I thought, is that really true? And honestly, the crazy part was I would be getting emails and I started tracking back those emails. The parents would send me, oh, you're not gonna believe what Johnny did. And I started just because I'm curious going back and looking and saying, is their pattern. And the pattern was two months, two months after they would have left my last session, the parents would email me. So if, if I was going to get an email other than an update, just something unique that they were doing, it was two months after that. So I thought that was pretty cool because the, again, clinical observations aligned with the research, which I loved. Perfect. Thank you. Next question is, what training does it take to become a coach for CogMed? 
So Cognit has a training um, session on their, like once you buy the license, it'll it has like a learning program, learning system built in that you just go through and learn. I will tell you that you have to be um, a B qualification for Pearson, which means that Cognit appreciates the fact that the level of knowledge that you have, like I knew about neuroscience, I knew about um, neuroplasticity and I understood that. So I'm able to take this tool kind of like any other tool that as a professional that you would be using and apply that information. So it does have some training information and modules that you can go through, um, but you're doing that on your own. It's not like someone from CogMed, you know, appears to you and does that for you. Thank you, Kyra. Next question is, can you tell us more about your experience with adults with ADHD? Yeah, I can give you one example. Um, I can give you a lot, but for lack of time, um, I had a nurse practitioner who was diagnosed with ADHD. She was a mom of three and she was adjunct professor um, at a local college. She came to me just saying, I've been able to do everything, all things, but now it's just falling apart. And she was 35. 35 is when our working memory starts to kind of dip anyway. So that's kind of also when a person with ADHD, you can kind of, they really start to feel it. Um, and so I took her through CogMed. She did amazing. I coached her one day a week. She did the rest on her own. Um, two months after I saw it, well, I don't know if it was two months. It might have been six weeks. I don't know. But her boss called me and he said, um, and he was a nurse practitioner, and he, he said, Kyra, what did you do with her? Because I've worked with her for seven years and I've never seen her work better. I've never seen her mood better. I've never seen her more efficient at what she's doing. So that's the power of that. I also saw a 60-year-old um, who <laughs> was really upset and very anxious because her she was a coder and they were putting time restraints on her. And so she was taking way more time to complete and not, not making the um, the not doing as many codes as they required. So she needed to be faster. And she um, inquired and reached out to me and I took her through it. And um, again, her, uh, she sent me a letter that her, she got off probation from work because she was able to meet her time limits. Um, so it helped, definitely helped her as well. But I have, a, I mean, I have some that I've worked with that had had um, a TBI. I've worked with post-cancer, um, like it, they would, like chemotherapy brain is what they kind of called it. Um, I've worked with college students. So yes, I have definitely worked with adults. Next question. All right, it looks like we got time for one more question. So do you notice any differences in terms of benefits or effects depending on the age of the client? I don't, I never saw, it. I wouldn't say age was the factor as much as um, specific diagnosis or you know, ADHD can also be comorbid with other um, other factors. So um, I, I would say that's where I would see it more as opposed to age. Um, my sweet spot for making the most gains, what I would say would be third graders on, on up. Um, the younger ones took a little bit more training. So if you're just doing it online, um, it's it's harder to coach that doing online, um, but they are effective. Um, definitely, there's there's still an effect. It's just you have to kind of um, change your model or have that flexibility of seeing them hybrid. I guess I would say. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, well, I show time. So I'd like to thank our presenter, Kyra Minikin, for sharing her expertise with us. And a big thank you to our Q&A monitors, Alexandra, Vanessa, and Katerina. Uh, thank you all for participating in our webinar. Please leave your browser open as an action item list will pop up. Look for your certificate in your email within three weeks 
Have a wonderful rest of your day. And this does conclude our webinar. Thank you.